Okay, no time for chit chat. I have just got back from Athens and I need to make sure that you go visit. When you go to Greece, yes, you should visit the islands, but you should also spend time in the capital because it's incredible. Right, we're gonna get straight into it because I have a lot to say today. And we're gonna start with my favorite thing to do in a new city, although this was my second time in Athens. But nevertheless, I like to find a good vantage point. Today, I'm gonna be sharing four incredible vantage points with you and a fifth one at the end of this video. This is, this is how I hook you in. The first vantage point that I'm going to be sharing is Mars Hill, also known as Areopagus. Before I tell you everything I know about this hill, which is a medium amount, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video. Our sponsor is WISE, formerly known as TransferWISE, and if you love travel like me, which I'm assuming you do, they are a service you should know about. I have personally been using them since 2018 when I was doing my big trip around East Africa. If you have been following me that long, you might remember it, you might not. And the reason I started using them then is because I was having trouble withdrawing money, sending money with different currencies, and this is where WISE absolutely shine. WISE allows you to send money to more than 80 countries around the world with the real exchange rate and no hidden fees. You can also hold more than 50 currencies in your account and convert between them instantly. You can get paid from abroad and you can spend internationally with the WISE debit card. According to their research, WISE is on average seven times cheaper than old school banks when you send, spend or withdraw money abroad. And if you're not convinced yet, I got a special offer exclusively for Girl vs. Globe viewers. It it is linked in the description and in the pinned comment below and it gives you your first 500 pounds completely for free with zero fees. Okay, back to our hill now. It has a pretty long history. In around 500 BC, the Athenian Council of Elders started using it as their meeting spot. And the council wasn't a small body. It consisted of 500 men. It's actually pretty easy to picture the meeting there because the hill gets unbelievably busy. So go there early in the morning and wear good walking shoes because they've got these marble steps leading up that are incredibly slippery. Okay, let's move on to our sunset hill now. It is called Philippapu Hill, also sometimes spelt like this, and it is amazing. I loved it so much because it's quite a wild hill compared to the other ones. There are loads of trees, it's a nice shady spot, and the sunset from there is incredible because not only do you see the Acropolis, which is probably the main draw, you also see the Saronic Gulf, you see the sea, and the views are really spectacular. I was gonna say it was my favorite hill, but I think I've got two favorites. In fact, let me share my other favorite now. That one is called Lycabetus Hill, which I might be pronouncing incorrectly, but it's written like this. And it's more of a hike. Personally, I didn't mind the uphill climb, but that's partly because I visited in November. So it wasn't too hot. In the summer, I can imagine it getting pretty intense, pretty sweaty. So if that sounds like a little too much, there is also a funicular that can take you up to the top. However, it isn't one with nice views because it's just enveloped inside a tunnel. So if you're after good views, unfortunately, you're, you're gonna need to do a bit of working out. But it is so worth it. At the top, you will not only get incredible views, there's also a small church. There is a big flagpole that you can see. We actually saw them taking the flag down, which was a bit confusing. I think it was because of bad weather, but for a second they were like, is this a coup? It wasn't a coup. And there is also a really cool restaurant. In fact, there are a couple. There is um, like a really fancy restaurant and then a slightly less fancy restaurant. They're both a little more expensive than what you pay in Athens in general, but that's because you're literally a captive audience. And I ordered some tzatziki, some souvlaki. Um, I think we had hot chocolate and yeah, it was delicious. Highly recommend it. Our next hill is the Acropolis itself. It literally translates to high city, so I think it definitely qualifies. And it is probably the most famous tourist site in all of Athens, and for good reason. It does get busy. I will be very honest about these. Yes, Athens is an incredibly busy, touristy city, but these places are hand on heart, totally worth it. The Acropolis has been the center of Athens since the Neolithic era, that's 7,000 BC, and it has gone through a lot of changes. Around 1400 BC, the ruling Mycenaeans chose it as a spot for their palace, and by 800 BC, Athenians were building temples all over the place. Then the Persians came along and they destroyed everything. In 480 BC, they invaded the hillside and they just razed it to the ground. 
rude, but Athens didn't just sit around moping because around 30 years later, ruler Pericles decided, do you know what? We're, we're gonna make things better. We're gonna put it back together. And that is when the absolute heyday of the Acropolis began. Over the next two generations, literally all of the famous structures that we see on the hill today were built. Those buildings include the Parthenon, the Erechtheion, the Propylaea, and the Temple of Athena Nike. The most famous of these is the Parthenon, a temple dedicated to goddess Athena, whom the people of Athens consider their patroness, hence the name Athens, Athena, Athens. The Parthenon is the most important surviving building of classical Greece and the most famous example of a Doric temple named after the columns you see all around it. What you see of the Parthenon today is just a ruin, albeit a pretty well preserved one. Here's what happened. For nearly 2000 years, the Parthenon stood there almost intact, and then 1687 came along. Now in 1687, the Turks were ruling Athens and most of Greece, and the Venetians wanted a piece of it. They wanted to destroy them, they wanted to take over Athens, and they didn't care how they did it or what got damaged in the process. So it was pretty intense warfare, and for some reason, the Turks thought it would be a brilliant idea to use the Parthenon to store their weapons, including gunpowder. And then a mortar shell landed on the temple and it went boom. So that, that was a bad idea in hindsight. But if you'd like a better idea of what the Parthenon originally looked like, and it was nothing like what you see in Athens these days, because what we tend to forget about the ancient Romans and the ancient Greeks is that their buildings were very colorful. You see those, you know, elegant Roman marble statues. They were white, they were painted. Um, yeah, the Propylaea, the entrance to the Acropolis, actually used to have a canopy of stars painted on top of it. I digress, but, but pretty fun digression, you gotta admit. The Parthenon. Um, you can see a life-size replica of it, including the giant Athena statue that was once inside it in, um, Nashville. The replica was designed by architect William Crawford Smith and built in 1897 as part of the Tennessee Centennial Exposition. I actually got to visit a few years ago and do you know what? It is pretty impressive. It feels a tiny bit tacky, um, but yeah, it's it's a very unique place. Now, now back to Athens, back to Athens. We're gonna talk about probably the second most famous tourist site in Athens and that is the Agora. Now, here's one thing you must bear in mind. There is in one Agora, there are two. There is the Roman Agora and what is called the Ancient Agora. The Roman Agora is the less ancient of the two. It was built around the second half of the first century BC. So that means it was created after the lives of Socrates and Plato and Aristotle and all those really big household philosophy names. So they wouldn't have had a chance to walk around here, but it was around the reign of Julius Caesar. I know we're in Greece and not Rome, but a fun fact about Caesar, Julius Caesar, his name, in fact, gave rise to other names like Kaiser in German or Tsar in Russian. And these are names now used to denote um, other types of rulers in those countries. You can explore the Roman Agora in less than 30 minutes. The ancient Agora is the main spectacle here. The Agora is often referred to as a marketplace, but I want to make it abundantly clear that it is so much more. It was essentially the epicenter of social life in all of Athens. So think of your typical Saturday. What would you do? You might go out shopping, yes, absolutely, but you might also go to see a play or a concert. You might go just walk around and, you know, be exposed to other human beings. Um, you might want to, like, eavesdrop on other people's conversations you might want to people watch, you might want to get some food, you might want to go to dinner in a nice restaurant. All of those were things that people in ancient Athens did as well, and they did them in the Agora. Okay, so yes, they would be clad in their magnificent tunics and look a little bit different to us, but essentially be doing very similar stuff. Um, they, when, when I talk about eavesdropping, some of the people that were frequently eavesdropped upon, although they were pretty vocal themselves, were um, some of the most renowned ancient Greek philosophers, including Socrates, you might have heard of him, or Diogenes, who you might not have heard of, but um, he was referred to in a walking tour that I'm gonna mention in a second as the original hippie, which I found pretty intriguing. Now, this walking tour that I wanna talk to you about is done by Rick Steves. He has an app, by the way, this isn't sponsored, but it is brilliant. He has an app that you can download for free, and in that app, he has loads of walking 
walking tours all around the world also for free. And I did the one of the Acropolis and I did one of the Ancient Agora and they were absolutely brilliant. Both of them last about an hour and it really enhances your experience because instead of just blankly looking at rocks trying to glean something from that, you are given all this incredible information. So I'm leaving a link below. It is such a good walking tour. And again, completely free. Um, absolutely loved it. My two personal highlights from the Agora are the Temple of Hephaestus. I just can't believe how well preserved it is. It looks absolutely spectacular. And if you download that free walking tour, um, Rick tells you a little more background about it. But even more impressive was the stoa. Now, I know I mentioned it is a replica, but what's most impressive about it is the museum inside of it. The stoa itself was an ancient shopping mall. The original structure was built in 150 BC and the reconstruction you see here in the 1950s. A little fun fact about the columns, notice how the lower part of each of them is polished smooth. This was done on purpose to encourage people to pause, lean against them, chat, and ultimately shop for longer. Now onto the Agora Museum. I just wanna show you a couple of the incredible items inside. This is the Claritarian, an early voting machine. Citizens would put ballots in the slots, then black and white balls would go into the tube and randomly select who would become the future city council members. Then there's the Clepsydra, or water thief. This was a water clock used to time council meeting speeches. You can fit 1.7 gallons of water inside of it, and it took six minutes to empty out the allocated time for each speaker. And there were so many other cool objects, I absolutely urge you to go to this museum. Okay, that is our magnificent viewpoints and the ancient Agora done. I think those items alone would be enough to last you, what, two to three days in Athens, but don't worry, there's plenty more. And um, my next point is a very quick one, a very general one, and that is to make sure you visit a Greek taverna. I'm linking a specific one here, but there are so many incredible restaurants that are traditionally Greek in Athens. Some of them do tend to be a little more touristy than others. The one that I'm linking here was not touristy at all, um, but yeah, completely up to you on what your comfort level is, where you wanna eat, but the food is incredible. And I have a whole separate video about Greek food. It has been doing incredibly well. Loads of people watched it already. Um, so if you want to be one of them, here's, here's a little plug, um, you should absolutely become one of them by watching it. The next five places I'm going to mention would make for a really nice day out. It might be a little too much to fit into one day, but if you're feeling ambitious, this would be super, super fun. So here is a little map of what that walk would look like, and it would start on Syntagma Square. This is the central Athenian square. Of course, back in ancient times, that city center used to be the Agora, the Acropolis. Nowadays, it is Syntagma. Running down from Syntagma Square, you will find Ermu Street. This is the main shopping street in Athens. It's, it's a nice shopping street. It wasn't my favorite thing that I saw in Athens, but there are loads of high street boutiques, as well as some more expensive ones. Um, and when you walk to the bottom of it, there is a very, very nice church. I couldn't film inside the church because it was prohibited, but take my word for it, it is worth going inside. But there is a better church. I don't know, are you allowed to do that? Are you allowed to be like, this church is okay, that church is better. Feels a bit blasphemous, but anyway, there is a better church. Built in 1842, this is Athens Metropolitan Church or the Metropolis, the name given by Orthodox Greeks to their cathedrals. The impressive church I'm talking about isn't the Metropolis though, it's the small one next to it. Its outside decorations were scavenged from earlier buildings and include everything from a pagan calendar, a pre-Christian frieze, old tombstones, and some mythical crypts. Around the corner from these two churches, you will find Aya Philotheus Street, full of shops selling all sorts of religious paraphernalia, from robes for Orthodox priests to incense burners and golden icons. A short walk away from the central church, you will find Hadrian's Arch. I just love the arch. I <laughs> I don't know why. There are many, many ruins in Athens, but this is one of my favorites. When you're done there, head east. You will go through the National Garden, which is a place with trees. <laughs> Like I'm underselling it. It has turtles. It has a small petting zoo, trees. It, it's a park, but it is a very nice park. The next place we're going to is the Panathenaic 
Stadium. Now, this is the original Olympic Stadium. It's very cool. My boyfriend, who is obsessed with the Olympics, absolutely loved it. When I said this was the original Olympic Stadium just now, that might have been a little confusing. It hosted the first modern Olympics in 1896. The ancient Olympic Games weren't held in Athens, but in Olympia, on the Peloponnese Peninsula in southern Greece. In ancient times, the Panathenaic Stadium hosted the Panathenaic Games, held every four years from 566 BC to the 3rd century AD. The Panathenaic Stadium is also notable for being the only stadium in the world built entirely of marble. While you're at the stadium, don't forget to get the free audio guide. It's pretty interesting. Okay, that's our little walking tour finished. And now I want to introduce you to three neighborhoods that I think you should visit while you're in Athens. And they are conveniently congregated in one area. So it is a really simple thing to do. And we're going to start with Siri. Siri is one of the quirkiest, artsiest neighborhoods in all of Athens. It's really fun to just stroll around and admire the colorful buildings and all the street art. I don't want to say it's a super authentic part of the city as it's so close to the center, but it certainly has its own character and it's a place the locals genuinely come to, especially at night. There are two fun spots I want to mention. The first is Baba Rum, a cocktail bar that is consistently ranked as one of the best in the world. And the second is Six Dogs, an all-day, all-night bar slash cultural center slash club serving organic cocktails and snacks. Once you're done exploring Siri, start heading north toward a neighborhood called Exarchaea. On your way, you'll come across the Central Municipal Athens Market, a really, really wonderful market selling everything from freshly caught fish to meat and vegetables. There are many restaurants inside the market serving really nice seafood. It's great for a quick lunch before you head to Edgy Exarchaea with its anarchist bookshops, its live music cafes, and its alternative nightlife. And in the evening, especially on a Friday or Saturday, head to Gazi. Gazi means gas in Greek, and that's because it is home to a huge, sprawling gas plant, which has now been converted into a social space. It's kind of hard to describe. They have a lot of things. They have food trucks, they have museums and exhibitions, sometimes they have performances, and loads of restaurants in the area. Okay, remaining are four places that I couldn't fit into any other category, but I wanted to mention nevertheless. The first is probably the least remarkable, and it is a small church I just chanced upon, but really liked, so I wanted to share it with you. It has a very long name. It's called the Greek Orthodox Church Pamegiston Taxarchion and Panagias Grigorousas. Um, I apologize to anyone who's Greek. Next up is genuinely one of the best museums I have ever been to. If you're even remotely interested in philosophy, please visit. It's called Plato's Academy Museum and it's a tiny bit further from the city center than some of the other places I've mentioned, but so worth it. I personally studied philosophy at Inter IB, International Baccalaureate, if you're familiar with it. It's like A-levels equivalent high school, basically. And I loved it. And um, this museum brought it all to life. If you're familiar with Plato's Allegory of the Cave, they have an entire room dedicated to explaining the concept. There's a small theater. There are loads of interactive bits. Um, there are visuals. There are maps. It's so good. I highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, I, I don't know if you can tell from my enthusiasm levels, but I thought it was pretty cool. Next up, we have another spot, which is um, a tiny bit, you know, unusual maybe to visit, but kind of cool. It's called Lifada, and it is the seaside part of Athens. If you are visiting Athens in the summer, I think it would be a brilliant place to go. And finally, number 19, Monastery of Kaisariani. I said that wrong, Kaisariani. No, I said that right. Never doubt yourself. Monastery of Kaisariani is a perfect day trip. Athens can be really busy, really noisy, and really overwhelming. And if you have enough time there, I was there for a week and it was my second time, you should take one day to just get out. Now, I'm not just talking about the monastery itself. I'm talking about the general area that it's in on Mount Hymetus. It's the perfect little hike away from Athens. You get beautiful views of the city, but also generally you feel like you're in nature. You get to recharge your batteries a little bit. And there are some really fun hikes, actually. Well signposted. You can just download maps.me if, if you want something a little more detailed, but yeah, the signs probably would be sufficient to just 
plan a day out and you can very easily get a taxi beat is who i would recommend they're a taxi company that make booking really really easy in athens you can just take a taxi there and take a taxi back it's super simple and the taxis are very affordable and that my friends is it for today thank you so much to wise for sponsoring this video don't forget that discount link is in the description and also pinned in the comment below and thanks to you as well for watching if you like my videos i bring out new ones every friday so don't forget to subscribe and i will see you next week well had a lip gloss on bye <laughs>